Good evening, New Life Church friends, family, guests. Welcome. Welcome to New Life Church. We're so glad that you're tuning in with us this evening. I know life may have been uh, all out of sorts for, for many of us. It has been for me so much so that I woke up on Saturday kind of uh, with kids being out of school, my wife's schedule being changed a little bit, my normal routine uh, of commuting and things have been changed a little bit. It's been a, a interesting so so much so that I woke up on Wednesday and actually or on Sunday or Saturday. I'm sorry, on Saturday and actually for kind of lost track of what day it was until I heard the trash truck coming to pick up our garbage like they do on Wednesdays and Saturdays and realized, oh wow, it's Saturday. So usually we would be coming to church the next day, but with everything going on, uh, we're gathering differently. But one thing we can do. And we can know is that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So in the midst of all of this craziness and all of the transition that's happening right now in our world, God is the same and His Word is the same. So tonight what I would like us to do is to look to the Word of God and I pray that it would just encourage you, it would administer to you as as we look to His Word. And this week and on this Wednesday, I would like us to look to something that... um, If we were all gathering together Sunday, we would be celebrating, and I pray that you continue to celebrate it, is the resurrection of Jesus, that the grave is empty, the tomb is empty. Even though these church walls, um, you know, and these buildings all across the the U.S. today um, and Sunday will be empty, the tomb is also empty. Jesus is not there. He is resurrected. So I wanted to take a little bit of time on this Wednesday evening to look to God's Word, because our Savior is risen. Friday, we celebrate Good Friday, which is the life of uh, of Jesus, of Him giving Himself as a sacrifice upon the cross. And then Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And I think before we even get there, let's tune our hearts into the Scripture uh, of what it says. So let's pray together. Then I want to read and look at some, some of the Word of God. God, we thank you for this time that we have together. We have to gather across this city in different homes, in different locations, to look to your word. And I pray that you would invade every home in a powerful way through your word. Lord, let your spirit just move in every heart and every life, quicken their hearts and their spirits to your word. Let them be transformed by your word tonight, encouraged by your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to read to you first uh, John chapter 20. And I'm going to be staying in John uh, for just a little bit here, then I'm going to jump to Romans. But listen to what John chapter 20 says. And I'm reading this out of the English Standard Version. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going towards the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloth lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their home. Aren't you thankful that that tomb is empty? And I love how Jesus... He, he folded up the towel that was on his head, signifying, hey, I'm not coming back here. You can leave this here. This is done. You know, if you're, if you're going to be coming back to your bed, you know, if you wake up, you hit snooze and go do something, you know, and you plan to come back to your bed, most likely you're not going to make that bed. You're going to leave it open because you're going to be crawling back. But I love the fact that Jesus, see, he folded that, that cloth and left it there, signifying this tomb's empty. I'm not coming back. Aren't you thankful for that today, that Jesus is alive. He has resurrected from the dead. Now what I would like you to do is to jump over a little bit to to John chapter 10 or jump back a little bit to John chapter 10. And I want us to look at at a few attributes of Jesus that I think point to the resurrection 
before his death and before the resurrection that Jesus was prophesying about himself what he came to accomplish and what he came to do. So if you have your Bibles there, let's look at John chapter 10. I'm going to start in verse 7. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. Verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Now the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. In a New Life Church, that's our mission, is right there, that we believe Jesus came to give life and life abundantly. And we just stated that Jesus came to give new life and greater life. New life and greater life for you. And that is our prayer, that even during this time, even though we may not be gathering together corporately and worshiping together and singing together and hearing the Word of God together in this auditorium, God's plan for you is still new life and greater life. So I encourage you, press in, lean into that fact. Know Jesus deeper during this time. Open up your Bibles on your own more than you have ever before. Spend some more time, extra time in prayer, seeking God, drawing together. Lead your family in times like this because God's plan is still new life and greater life. Pandemic or no pandemic, new life and greater life is God's plan for you and your family. And now verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Now listen to what the good shepherd does. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But again he repeats, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this field. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Wow. Did you hear that? Jesus received a charge from his Father to go and to be a shepherd to this world, to the people, to lay down his life. You realize that you are a part of this world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die upon the cross for you, for myself, so that we can have life in Jesus. You see, it's so important that we understand that even though we may not consider ourselves bad people, maybe you just haven't done anything so-called bad, but The Bible says, and Paul writes about it in Romans, verse 23 of chapter 6, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And all have sinned. All have fallen short of God's standard. It happened at the beginning of time in Genesis, when Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, sin entered into humanity. And there became this cosmic separation. Because of that sinfulness and because God is holy, there is the separation And you couldn't earn, and you couldn't draw close to God because of your own goodness. And so there had to be sacrifices yearly made. A spotless lamb had to be sacrificed for the people in order for them to have their their sins atoned for. But that wasn't God's ultimate plan. God had a greater plan, a better plan. He sent His only Son, Jesus. He gave Him a charge to come into this world. Jesus stepped down onto this planet. I like how it's written in Philippians that even though he he was God, he he didn't count that equality with God as something to be kept, but he sacrificed that and became flesh on this planet to give his life as a sacrifice, a once and for all sacrifice for all mankind. He did that because he loves you. 
So a couple things about the Good Shepherd, I think, that, that's encouraging for us is this. Number one, that the Good Shepherd, He cares for His sheep. The Good Shepherd cares for His sheep. He loves His sheep. He takes care of it. Did you hear that in, in this passage where it says that He, he loves His sheep? Verse 13, he, the, the hired hand, He flees because He is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Verse 14 says, I am the Good Shepherd. He's implying that, hey, others may flee, but I am the good shepherd. I care for you. I love you. I care about what you're going through right now. He cares about the the feelings you have in your life right now. He cares about the fear. You know what I think is so cool about the Psalms in Scripture? Is this, that you can, if you read through the Psalms, and I've been reading through the Psalms uh, in my daily devotion, along with some, the New Testament and the Old Testament and what I love is that in, in the Psalms, we see that David or the other psalmists that write these Psalms lift up complaints to God. Sometimes they're saying, God, where are you? Hey, God, are you even here? God, do you even care? And what I think is so powerful about that and why God allowed that to be part of the canon of Scripture is for us to see that it's okay to say, God, I don't know what's going on. God, where are you? Lord, what's happening with my life? And God's not scared of scared by your by your your worries and by your fears in fact the healthy thing to do is to lift them up to God to say God I don't know what's going on God I am nervous I'm casting my cares I'm casting my anxieties I'm casting my worries upon you because I know that the scripture says you care for me cast your cares cast your anxieties cast your worries upon the one who cares for you the good shepherd the good shepherd. Secondly is this, that the good shepherd knows his sheep. The good shepherd knows his sheep. Verse 14 continues, I know my own and my own know me. Isn't that so cool? It makes me think of, I have, uh, I have a dog, one dog, that's the only pet we have, that's the only pet we want right now, uh, is a dog. And my dog knows my voice. That will, there'll be, might be a bunch of people around uh, outside, and my dog might start wandering off. But when he hears my voice, he even knows the voice of my children. But when he hears my voice, the one that helped train him when he was little, he responds and he'll come running back home. And I love this that says that God knows us and we know him. That I know my own and my own know me. Let me ask you this. And this might be something that during this time uh, you lean into a little bit is do you know God's voice? Do you know the voice of God? Say, God, I I don't hear God speaking. Have you learned to be quiet and to listen and to know the voice of your shepherd? And you can. You can learn to know him by reading the word of God, by spending time in prayer. You'll sharpen your ear to the voice of God because you are his. God cares for you. God knows you. And how powerful is this that the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep? The good shepherd is not afraid to lay down his life for his sheep. In this passage, there's four times that Jesus repeats it. I lay down my life for my sheep. I lay down my life that I may take it up again. I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down. Multiple times he's repeating this. And that's what he came to do for his sheep. He came to lay down his, sheep, his life for his sheep. Isn't that so powerful knowing that God knows us, he cares for us, and he showed that by laying down his life for his sheep. He is the good shepherd. The good shepherd came to lay down his life for you. Now listen to how, how Jesus goes on and, and continues to uh, attribute himself with uh, with another uh, term here in verse uh, 17 of chapter 11 I want I want to read a little bit so when Jesus came he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days Bethany was near Jerusalem about two miles off and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother so when Martha heard that Jesus was coming she went out and met him but Mary remained seated in the house Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Man, that's some faith, isn't it? Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Now listen to Martha's response. 
She said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. So she had belief in a resurrection uh, of the dead. But listen to Jesus. He said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. It's who he is. That's what he did. That's who he is. And Jesus asked Martha if she believed. And what he was ensuing is that her faith in the resurrection went beyond just the need for a physical resurrection for her brother. He was asking her, do you believe? Not do you believe that I can raise your brother from the dead. She already stated that she knew he could do that. But his question was, do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? And to which she said, yes, Lord, I believe. Friend, do you believe with all your heart that this scenario, maybe not even this pandemic, but maybe there's other things going on in your life right now that maybe it's physical death, maybe you lost a loved one, maybe it's uh, something financial, relational, whatever it may be. Do you believe that first of all, Jesus can resurrect that situation, but more so above that, do you believe that he is the resurrection and the life? And that there's coming a day when all of the pain in this world will melt away and there will be peace forever. Hope in Jesus. Do you believe that? The resurrection and the life. But see, there's a cost. There's a cost for it. In John 19, we read, and I'm, I'm, I'm flipping through my scripture here to John chapter 19, because there is a cost for this future resurrection. And first of all, Jesus gave his life. In John chapter 19, we read of the crucifixion of Jesus. And Jesus talked about it before multiple times. And just now in our scriptures that we looked at, Jesus said that I've come to lay down my life. You see, there, was a, there is a cost for the resurrection that we hope to experience in Jesus Christ. And it was the cost was through the death of Jesus Christ. Now, I want us to flip over to Romans because I, I love how Paul pins some of these scriptures about what Jesus did for us. I love what he does here in these scriptures, and, and then we're going to wrap up, and I want to encourage you to pray some with your family there. But he, see, there's, there's a cost. In John 19, listen to what it says. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the un ungodly. Verse 8, but God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died. Verse 10, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death, of his son. And on and on you can read through the old, through the, I'm sorry, through the, uh, through, through the gospels and you can read in Paul's writing that there's an incredible experience and benefits that we have, but it was not free. It's maybe free for us when we receive it. The grace that we've been given is free in fa by faith in Jesus Christ, but it was not free. Remember, Jesus laid down his life as he spoke of in John in John, when he was speaking of the Good Shepherd in John 10, he, nobody took it from him. He laid it down for you. It was a decision made because of his great love for you to lay down his life. Now listen to the gift. First of all, the gift is of resurrection, resurrected life for us. I believe that means now we can walk in, in a newness of life, a new life and a greater life in Jesus while we were on this earth. But above and beyond that, we have hope of a future in heaven with Jesus our Savior. But listen to, also, uh, listen to some of these gifts that we have also in the, in the life, in the death of Jesus. And I'm going to read just some verses here. And I encourage you, check, check out the full chapters. Read the full context. Context is king uh, in, in, in studying the word of God. But listen to what Romans uh, 5 says in, in verse 9. First gift is this. We, we've been justified. We've been made right. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, 
much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. So we've been justified. We've been made right just as if nothing had happened. That's how we are in standing with our God now because of Jesus. When our faith is in Jesus, that's what we've been made. We've been justified because of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome that you have been made right with God because of the blood of Jesus that wasn't taken but was poured out for you? Secondly is this, that we have been saved from wrath. Verse uh, 9 says that. It, it continued on, if you heard me, that we shall be saved by him from the wrath of God. Man, isn't that encouraging? We've been saved from the wrath of God. Let's look at, let's continue to look on through here. For, in verse 10, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. We've been reconciled to God. Isn't that awesome? Remember, sin separated. Because of Adam and Eve and their sin in the garden, sin separated, it severed the relationship. But because of Jesus Christ, because of his life, because of his death, we have now been reconciled to God. Wow. That you can boldly come before God and lift up your prayers, lift up your petitions, lift up your needs, your cares, your concerns, and God hears it because you've been reconciled to God. Aren't you thankful for that? Continue on. Now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? We've been saved. More than that, also, we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Let me jump on down here a little bit further to verse 17. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. And in this, these few verses here, he's talking how death came in through Adam and Eve's decision. Death came in through Adam. It came in through Adam. But life came in through Jesus Christ with an abundance of grace. With an abundance of grace and righteousness because of Jesus. Now let me finish reading chapter 5 here. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For all men. Mom, dad, for your children. Grandparents, for your great-grandchildren, for your grandkids, for your kids. For all men. There is hope for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience this many will be made righteous. Wow. Now the law came in to increase, increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life. That means there's resurrection for you. Resurrection hope for you. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you're doing. God, we've gathered here to celebrate your life. God, we've gathered here to celebrate, Lord, the, the death of the cross, but the resurrection that our God lives, our God reigns. Lord, I pray for my friends family, those checking in right now, that maybe they don't know you, maybe they've never given their life to you. I pray that through hearing this and hearing the great gift that we have through Jesus Christ, that Lord, hearts would, would melt in your presence and that lives would be surrendered to you. You sent your son Jesus so that all may have life. For we've all fallen short of your incredible standard but because of jesus we can be made right so lord i pray right now across every home that you would be moving in their hearts and lives encouraging powering strengthening and that during this week that we would remember what you have done for us through jesus the resurrection and the life amen <clears throat> amen aren't you thankful for that aren't you thankful for what he's done for you wow He's so good. Well, I want to encourage you as we wrap up here, 
Spend some time praying with your family, reading the Word of God to your family. If you have kids, elementary age, I encourage you to uh, check out the Kids Connect uh, Facebook page. There's a lot of things on there for your children during this time, scripture reading, um, some lessons specifically for them as well. It's going to help them continue to grow and, and seek Jesus and know Jesus, the truth uh, about Jesus. Um, so I encourage you to get involved in that with your kids. Uh, continue getting plugged in through our Facebook page or our YouTube page. And just remember, God loves you. We love you. We're here for you. Reach out to us. God bless.